computer science is not an easy topic. Let's be honest. It's not an easy topic. And what we found to be one of the best resources for computer science is our team leaders. So I am stoked that New Jersey 4-H, who I've seen a lot of 4-H team programs across the states, um, and especially those that are involving STEM. And New Jersey 4-H is top notch. Their STEM ambassador program that you're gonna hear about today, I just, I'm always in awe of not only the quality of the kids that are coming out of that program and the, the outputs that these kids produce, but the structure that allows these kids to maximize their potential. It's a well thought out program. And so I, I'm really excited that I'm willing to share the secret sauce that, that they make this amazing product with because it really is a, a top notch program that I look to and think, wow, how do they pull that off? And especially now, I mean, the reality is we're still in a pandemic and we're still going to be there for a minute um, and so how they've engaged youth and teens in this process has been pretty impressive as well. So with that, take it away, Mary Carmen, you're, you're amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm gonna share my screen. Let's see if I can do this right, possibly. It looks great, yeah. Okay, um, so thank you, Dave. Uh, I will say this is, crazy this pandemic. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how we engage our 4-H STEM ambassadors um, and our team leaders virtually. Um, and I will say uh, the key and that secret sauce really is are those teens. Um, so I'll start just like everyone else on the call. Uh, March of 2020, um, we actually went virtual very quickly. We went virtual. Our first virtual program was run the 19th of March. Um, so we had only been out for about a week at that point, and that was sort of just a way that we wanted to keep our families engaged um, so that we didn't lose our families. That's really what our main goal at first was, and that changed um, tremendously over time. So we do have a New Jersey 4-H from home page that anyone can check out. There's resources information on there as well. So this is going back pre-pandemic. Uh, we have what are called our STEM ambassadors. They're STEM team leaders. They come from seven urban areas across New Jersey. Uh, they are trained through a pretty extensive training program. And before pandemic, we actually used to train them um, in person and we would spend a lot of time with them. And then they would actually teach our younger youth. Uh, we've been doing this for years. Um, more recently, we focused on computer science. So our teens are trained on computer science. We'll talk a little bit about that and what that looks like. Prior to pandemic, we had uh, 21 current STEM ambassadors that actually worked with us through pandemic. So, and I'll explain what that means. Um, we have more STEM ambassadors that exist, uh, but these were the 21 core that actually helped us to create what moved forward virtually. And then in July of 2020, those 21 STEM ambassadors actually trained 30 new STEM ambassadors uh, for the virtual 20 year. Um, we have about 50 to 60 active STEM ambassadors statewide right now. Um, so this is actually um, from one of our first trainings. Um, this is actually CS Unplugged. Um, the picture is origami. Uh, that they are teaching. So these were our STEM ambassadors learning how to teach our new STEM ambassadors um, how to run through the origami sequencing activity. Um, so what we really learned was that our STEM ambassadors are the most valuable team member that we have. They know what works virtually, they know what doesn't work virtually, and they are very willing to share those ideas. They have great ideas. They're super creative and flexible, and especially in this virtual environment. And we've really leaned on them um, as we transitioned into this virtual environment. Um, so Dave was talking a little bit about like what's different. And I think this is really what the key is on why we're able to support them. One, we really truly respect them as being a leader and a valuable team member. They're not seen as another youth going through a 4-H program. They're actually seen as a leader of this program. Um, they have official 4-H shirts, just like our staff do. 
Um, and we provide them with these opportunities. Uh, they are provided with sort of new opportunities that can help them on sort of an educational front. We provide them with opportunities to train and teach them, um, and then also ways to develop their leadership skills. And we actually provide them with all the curriculum. And what we did virtually was a little different, obviously, than what we did. So you can see, um, these are all sort of our virtual training sessions. Um, they actually now, this is uh, one of the easiest things for us has been the ability to transition to virtually for them. Um, they actually sort of have decided and now originally prior we would meet, uh, meet in person in our counties with our smaller STEM ambassador groups. And now we meet statewide as one large STEM ambassador group. Uh, they have the same, they, de de they decided their meeting time, their meeting dates, uh, they meet the same time every month. They learn about each other they, with their own ideas. Um, they just participated in uh, the teams, the president and vice president secretary decided that uh, club members uh, would actually do Bitmoji lockers to introduce themselves. So they create virtual Bitmoji lockers. And they actually have been during our business meetings, they will go around and introduce each other uh, using their Bitmoji lockers. Again, all decided on by them. Uh, they have a template they use, they share that, they support each other in creating that. Uh, they voted on their president, vice president, secretary. It was all decided by them. Uh, they have a text message chain that they created that they keep in contact with one another. And as faculty and staff, we're actually just there in these meetings to support them. We provide them opportunities. So we just say, hey, this is what's coming up. We help to coordinate any uh, larger activities across the state with other faculty and staff. Um, but it actually has led to um, an interesting dynamic. These teens come from all across the state. They Many of them have not at this point, those new 30 teens have never met anyone physically in the group, um, including faculty or staff. So it's become very interesting. Uh, we see that this will probably continue post pandemic for this particular project as a way to really keep them engaged as an entire state. So it actually worked out really well for us. Um, we do with our teens actually plan all of the STEM programming. So the teens are part of development, planning, implementation. Um, faculty and staff can have an idea. We bring the teens in and sort of pitch the ideas and the teens decide, hey, that might work. How about we change this? Or we don't think that's gonna work at all. Um, and we've really let them kind of decide and, and drive what we're doing. Um, we've created planning tools with the help of our teens. So to the right, this is actually the planning tool that's used for the Mars Base Camp Teachbacks. Um, and just recently, other faculty and staff across the state are actually use, utilizing our planning tools, but also our STEM ambassadors. So they are actually teaching in other counties that they would normally not necessarily teach in. Um, like they would if we were in person. We've been, one of the big things we've been doing is providing materials, curriculum and materials to all of our leader, our STEM leaders, our teens and our faculty and staff in their home. And that way they can follow along when training. So that's been a great, um, you can see here, these are, we did like a huge mailing to all of our STEM ambassadors. They get their materials and then they can work on all the different projects throughout the course of the uh, year that we've been doing this now. Mars Base Camp has been a huge success, has worked really well virtually for us. Um, we trained our STEM ambassadors to lead. We trained volunteers to lead. Um, we actually held, have held now, uh, I think we're on our sixth separate activity. We've had 20 teens teaching Mars Base Camp across our state. We've had over 25 hours of Mars Base Camp programming and over 400 youth throughout our state that have participated in one way or another. Um, which has been really successful again in our county. So you can see some of the youth participating in Mars Base Camp. They get to show their rovers. They're super excited. Um, and our teens have been really instrumental in, in helping with that. We also really provide different lear virtual learning opportunities. What we've learned really quickly, um, some teens that are really great in person don't really love the virtual environment. Some teens who 
really don't do well in person, love the virtual environment. So we actually offer lots of different ways that they can participate. So they're doing planning with their 4-H professionals on a specific event. They can create videos on their own that we're utilizing. Um, they can create blog posts that we have a, we have a STEM blog um, for the state that they can post on. And they have been able to moderate STEM professional events. So um, where some STEM scientists are speaking and the moderators are our team leaders. They're supported and trained in each of those different activities and we provide all of that. So it's just an easy transition. But we found that, you know, we wanna offer something for everyone and not everyone you know, is great with the virtual environment. Obviously there are challenges with technology and being virtual. Um, technology overall, there's just general challenges. Teen schedule right now, during this whole pandemic, right? Schools were in-person, schools were out, schools were at different time periods, uh, sports were not running, sports are running. We're seeing some Zoom fatigue um, over time and the teens will tell us that. And then there was sort of a, a challenge on how you deliver materials um, you know, to different teens in different ways and then also to our participants. We have some really good feedback from um, participants, our STEM leaders and our STEM teens are giving great feedback. Our parents that are our STEM leaders are really, you know, really positive feedback from all of our participants um, in different ways. Um, and then sort of flipping that we've, like I said, we've been doing a lot of our teens are now working with 4-H staff and faculty who they may not have worked with before um, that are not directly involved with their training. And we're getting lots of great feedback about how flexible they are, how creative, how much they add to the program. And we're actually getting receiving feedback from participants of the program virtually. Um, the youth on the right is participating in one of the larger Mars-based camps that's happening over time. And they were like super excited to have teen leaders and, and be able to, to lead them through it. And, and they're really appreciative of the fact that there's these teens leading them through these programs. Um, so we've been very lucky. And that's really kind of the, the quick, secret of um, our program, if, if that's helpful. <laughs> I will stop, let me stop sharing too. So that gets us through, every, that's pretty much everything, or the short version. <laughs> so I, I'm sure other people will have, have questions. The, the first question I have for you is what, now that you've lived it, you didn't wanna live through this, but we all made it through, what things are you going to carry forward when you go back to a quote unquote normal, if normal looks like this fall? You, you mentioned something like there's some kids that actually thrive and do better in this environment. So what things are you going to keep and what things are you like that just did not work and we're not going to do anymore? Yeah, so it's interesting. We've had this conversation with our teens because uh, we usually do an intensive one week residential program where we train them to get started as, as our ambassadors. Um, and when we train them, we are on campus together, we live together, we have meals together. I mean, it's a very different experience. Um, and we were trying to figure out what can we take from that to move virtually. And we were able to take some of those components, but the teens definitely feel like there's great value in bringing them back together. So we have um, plans in the future. Like I mentioned, we have about 30 teens now that have never met any of us. They've not met their Team, other team leaders in person. They haven't met their staff and their faculty in their counties. Um, so one of the things that we were hoping is once we get through the pandemic is bringing some of those teens together to physically work together and um, participate in programming. Um, I think we will keep, like I said, the, one of the great benefits was being able to have all of our teens work virtually um, over the course of this whole year as a, an entire group. Um, and then a lot of them are getting to know each other virtually. They may not have in person because they're so far physically. They're, you know, an hour and a half drive. So they wouldn't necessarily be driving an hour and a half to meet with those teens. So I think we'll definitely have more of a hybrid ap approach. Um, the teens have actually started making training, pre-training videos to recruit our new ambassadors. So that's been a value. So I think there has been great value to this um, virtual environment and push towards some of our tech that we maybe wouldn't have embraced as quickly um, and so happily 
prior to this, but I do think that it's going to be a really fine balancing act. And I think for us, we are always going to take it back to the teens to figure out, is this working? Is it not working? And I think just like everything else, it's going to have to adapt and change as we move forward. Um, we've been lucky enough to work with some great scientists that you may not often. Um, when we did our virtual training, we actually worked with um, an aquarium in Miami and they were able to do you know, a really great interactive program with our teens, a virtual tour of the aquarium and things like that. So in that case, you know, we're not gonna fly uh, you know, 60 of our teens down to Miami to go tour an aquarium, but we have the ability to do that virtually. So I think, like you said, there's sort of gonna be things that we'll keep and things that will probably transition back to in-person in the future. So we'll, we'll see. Um, Sarah asked about the support and training. Um, so we provide, so we kind of do it twofold. We, when we sort of hire on our STEM ambassadors for the year, they go through an application process. They actually apply um, through an application process. In, in person, we would not only do an application process, but our teens would actually interview our new teens um, and then we would accept them into the program. So there's still an application process. It was a little quicker and a little different this, this time around. Um, and then what would happen is they're required to attend their first sort of large training that we did virtually. So it was over the course of two weeks, um, not every day, few hours here and there. Um, and they participated in all components. They had sort of, we have, we have like a little bit of a, Kind of a plan we explore you know stem we do some more in-depth where they work in smaller groups with particular scientists that might be their area of interest so that they can learn a little bit about that particular stem field um, we bring them back together to teach them activities that they're going to teach and lead and train others with in the future um, and they sort of you know close out with a, a large activity at the end so they kind of have a training program that they're required to participate in and then after that we provide curriculum specific training on anything that we're thinking we're going to implement in the future but we offer it to everyone it doesn't mean every stem ambassador is required to attend those that attend one training may not be able to attend another, but when we actually do programming, we ask all of them who's interested in actually teaching, but you had to have attended the training. So for example, for Mars Base Camp, there were several trainings that were offered. If they were trained in Mars Base Camp, then another county that's running it for a six week program actually reaches out to those that are trained. And we say, hey, you were trained in Mars Base Camp. Would you be interested in teaching Mars Base Camp to these youth? Uh, but those that only participated in uh, say our CS Unplugged training, then when we do a CS Unplugged activity, we reach out to those teens. And we provide training um, and the support throughout the entire year at different points. And they can, they are, it's optional what they attend. They don't, they're not required to attend everything. So I hope that answers your question, Sarah. That's awesome. Um, one other question I had is, Who's the organizing force? Is it a state person, a county person, a volunteer that's tracking the all these teens and what they're trained in and opportunities and, and communicating that back out? So we have a team. Um, there's so every there's seven urban, uh, pretty much seven urban cities that participate in our STEM ambassador program. We are all uh, faculty and staff in the that particular county is responsible for um, their county specifically. Like I said before, we were just meeting in our counties and really tracking our own county. Um, so we have this team that meets pretty regularly. And what we do is that team uh, keeps that communication. And then two of us from the team actually work directly with our STEM ambassador returners. Um, and those are our STEM ambassadors have been coming and or have been trained prior. 
Um, and then we have a smaller group of us that works particularly on development of the new training to come apart. And then we kind of bring each other back in. We share all the information uh, with that group regularly. And then the, the group of us that meets with our STEM ambassadors as a, a monthly meeting, will bring that back and really just link people up. So it doesn't tax everyone uh, to be at every single meeting for every single event and activity. It's really shared around the group. Around the group. Um, we keep track of, you know, our, our secretary keeps track of their attendance at their business meetings then those of us that are working collaboratively will keep track of uh, what they actually did. The teams themselves are responsible for their own service tracking, right? So it's their responsibility to keep track of the service hours that they do. So if they're teaching um, in one county or in another county or virtually or in person, whatever it is, they actually have a track, they can, they can keep track any way they want to, but they're really responsible for tracking their own hours. And then we keep track as a group on any of the things that they've participated in by gathering that information from anyone else who may have utilized our team STEM ambassadors. Um, so that's a great question, Sarah. Yeah, we so at the beginning of, um, so we do a couple of quick things uh, with ages and stages and experiential learning. Um, Oh, and now I can't think of our, do we have an activity that we do that's all about what makes a STEM leader a good STEM, or a, in their case, what makes a good STEM educator, right? So they're all youth that have been in school or in other things, and they actually do an activity where they come up with um, what is a good STEM educator. So what works and what doesn't work, and they'll actually work in, the, in groups to come up with this. And then we talk about how that really replicates what the science and the research shows when they come up with their answers. It's the same thing, right? Being prepared, being engaged. We do um, sort of a how to prepare when working with youth. Um, you know, so what should you do, uh, you know, if, all of a sudden, no one's interested and involved, right? And in 4-H, we all know you have a, a point, a, a plan A, a plan e, a B, a plan C, plan D. We have lots of those, right? We teach the teens, like, what would you do? What would you do if you guys were doing this activity and all the kids were like, oh, I don't want to do it anymore. Or the screens aren't off on. So we kind of just um, do a lot of questions and answers and we let them see what's happening, right? So we always let them debrief with whatever they're doing, right? What went well? What didn't go well? How do you learn? Just like any teacher that might be in a classroom for the very first year, you know, they have to debrief with their supervisors. We let the teens kind of learn by doing, um, give them examples, test it out, um, and sort of role, pe role play in a sense. Um, so we do kind of talk about What's the difference when we're working on a curriculum? We always talk about what grade or ages, grades in our case, you know, this is a fourth grade to eighth grade. Well, some of them are just out of eighth grade. So, and we also try to pair up our older STEM ambassadors with some of our younger ones because they've been doing it. So they know a little bit and we always give them sort of the range in how to help out with our younger STEM ambassadors as well. Um, I found this. So, so I, I, like I said, I do feel like, you know, you need it, but I think a lot of them are pretty, you know, they're, they can tell you what teachers in their school are great teachers and why, and what teachers they have no idea what their teacher said. <laughs> um, so they're pretty good at that. And then curriculum besides Mars Base Camp. So we've been using, we use Google CS first. We've used a lot of CS Unplugged. Um, Dave, we use your chalk coding. It's pretty funny. Um, I just, we, we did these CS unplugged kits that had the chalk coding activity. We had one, some of our teens actually make chalk coding videos. Um, we use, uh, there's a lot of CS unplugged activities that we've been using. Uh, we have obviously access to the university. So we have uh, scientists that are teaching Python, um, Makey Makey Scratch, all, Pretty much anything that you can think of, and I will say most of these teens, uh, if they haven't already used it, they may have used something similar, so they're very familiar with a lot of the curriculum and then, not the curriculum per se, but a lot of the different activities. 
Um, since we went virtual, we have been trying to use a lot of the CS Unplugged um, as kids are not really wanting to do a lot on the computers or they've been on computers all day. So it's so fun to actually have something hands-on and engaging. And like I said, we are sending kits home so they have actual materials in their hands to use um, with that. Uh, but I actually, we, I have like a, an Excel, not an Excel sheet, like a Word doc with a bunch of different random curriculums and <laughs> things that we've used if anyone needs more specific information we can share we can share some of that out as well so that yeah <laughs> we use whatever the kids really want it we let them test it out too and then they're like oh this is not um we did that with one of our trainings i can't remember there was one they were like we're not doing this this is boring <laughs> and we're like okay so let's you know what you know let's switch it out um so and some of them have been really creative um the Greater Cincinnati Conservatory Consortium, something like that. Guys, they have these STEM um, STEM cards that you can find online. They have a whole technology card, and it's all stuff that you can do at home. Um, and they have it for all different STEM categories. But they're really easy activities that you can do. There's lots of fun ones, and there's a lot of ways for teens and kids to get super creative. Almost like, oh, you're going, you know, you're a de you're a detective or a spy, and you can kind of create your own using some of those STEM cards. Um, those are, those are really neat. And we found a lot of fun activities that you can do um, with those as well. But I can share, I can definitely share. Yeah, I'm gonna, I can share that for sure. And I'm gonna put, um, I'll put some stuff in the chat also. Um, for Mars Base Camp, uh, obviously having Rutgers, we have a project Enigma where we had actual scientists live that you can ask questions to, questions of, all related to Mars um, and the rover. And there's so much happening and so much going on around that. It's been really, you know, a great way to keep that moving and, and using it, utilizing it in different ways. And I'll find the Cincinnati. I have these, all these things. There's lots of things out there that we've been using. I'll get some links for you also. Excellent, and uh, I, I'm gonna put Kenny on the spot. Kenny, do you want, since everyone's asking about resources and we're sharing resources, do you wanna give a shout out for your upcoming uh, scan? Yeah, soon we're gonna send out uh, a scan survey to all the grantees, Google grantees that have participated over the last couple of years asking basically, you know, what are your favorite activities? How did you use them? What are your, you know, your favorite tech? And uh, so it's gonna be interesting to see both what the uh, educators and implementers of uh, like you guys have said, but also what the teens are mostly interested in because uh, since teens are so valuable and integral to uh, these programs, uh, what they're most interested in using. So uh, that is actually um, good feedback and we could probably tweak the questions a little bit now um, before we send it out uh, to include some of, you know, what were your teens favorite activities and how did they use them. Um, so yeah, thanks, Mary Carmen. Hey, thanks, Kenny. I, I don't know if anyone participated in the financial literacy scan, but it is going to be an amazing tool to see what people have come up with over the last three years of CS because we know there's some nuggets out there that haven't been broadly shared that maybe you've just discovered. And we tried to share out over the three years what was happening um, and like new things like uh, Edison robots, things like that, that people are like, yeah, this is really good. So we hope to get the, that scan out there soon um, to, to share with people so we can crowdsource that data. Um, so Kenny, thanks for, for working on that. Um, any other questions for, for Mary Carmen? Double check the chat. Oh, wow. Like, you guys, there's just all kinds of resources being put in the chat here. This is awesome. We're saving this chat, right? <laughs> yes, I am. Not to worry. I am saving. Yeah, not to worry. Yep. That's, <laughs> yes, we definitely want to hear this. Okay. I don't see any other questions. Mary Carver, honestly, I appreciate you guys so much and especially sharing how you pivoted. And I know they do have a great, um, 
STEM Ambassador website that you can learn more about their program. I highly recommend checking it out. Um, the name of the program, oh yeah, we got that one in there. Um, I, what I do love most is that they have created a network across their state that it's not about what county you're from. It's like you have this giant sense of belonging. And for our STEM kids especially, historically there's been fewer of them in number than say like in our state, the horse kids tend to dominate and they feel like they're part of something big. But for having our STEM kids feel like across the state, we have a, a wolf pack that we can be part of, it's huge. Um, so I really appreciate all the good work that you've done. Um, Gabby, anything else that we need to, uh, to mention? No, not that I can think of. Um, just be aware that our next webinar is coming up on April, I want to say it's April 20th, and it's going to be focused on 3D printing. So mark your calendars. It's going to be same time, 2.30 Eastern, uh, same place via Zoom because, you know, pandemic. But um, we're hoping to have everyone back then. Thank you very much for your time today. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Good to see everyone again.